Good morning. Well, at least it's morning. <laughs> Those of you in the United States know what I'm talking about. Anyway, good morning and welcome to Photo Justice Photo Moment. It is the first live daily photography show on Facebook every weekday, 9.30 a.m. at facebook.com slash photojoseph. Catch up on the old ones right here at photojoseph.com slash moments. Takes you to my YouTube page. Please like and subscribe on YouTube because that's awesome. So today's moment, as my fan takes off here, if my computer starts to levitate, it's because the internal fan's going crazy. Today's photo moment is a uh, answer to a very specific user question. Uh, someone wrote in and asked about capturing their iPhone screen on their computer, as well as, it was kind of a two-part question, as well as actually tethering to the computer. Kind of interesting idea. So there's a couple of different things that we're talking about here. First, there's just capturing what happens on the screen and then using the iPhone camera and seeing your picture show up on the computer right away. Kind of a two-part. So we'll actually see if uh, how long this goes. I may just not do the second part today. I may, may hold that for tomorrow, the part of tethering it. But anyway, so first of all, the first question is, what do you need? Well, the easy answer to that is, first thing you need is one of these. This is the Lightning, Lightning, yes, Lightning, Apple, Lightning, HDMI cable. It has an HDMI port and a power port on it. Both very important things. So that is the first step. That is what is going to allow you to get your video signal out from here to whatever else it's gonna to go to. So in my situation, my case here, and now that I'm dropping all my cables, the way that I do this here in the studio is, oops, let's plug this back in here. Plug in the HDMI cable. I always plug in the power cable. You don't have to have power on there. So you can do this remotely, but needless to say, needless to say, having power is usually a good thing. Come back here, there we go. So when I plug this guy in or plug my iPad in, it's the same thing. What this feeds out is a 1920 by 1080 signal at 5994 frames per second. That doesn't really matter unless you're really into these kind of things, but um, but that's what it does. So what it's now done as I have, let's see here, I can go to my iOS screen and that's what we're seeing. So we're seeing I'm holding it in portrait mode and that's the screen that we're looking at. If I rotate the iPod, or iPhone. In this case, because it's a 6 Plus, you do get landscape mode on the home screen. On anything smaller than a Plus, you do not. You only get the vertical, even if you do rotate it. But if you were in an app that had a landscape orientation, when you went landscape, it would do that. So that is the video out. Now, the next obvious question is, where does that go to? Uh, where's that video going to? So in my case, for these broadcasts, it is going into a, well, to kind of simplify it, I have a big switcher and I am one of these days I'm going to do a full on tour of the broadcast studio because I know a lot of people are interested in that. Um, but this HDMI signal would go into your switcher. In my case, it's not going directly into the switcher because I have to change frame rates because of the format that I'm broadcasting at, which means it does go into something called a decimator, which I can, I don't know if I can get this into frame or not here. Uh, can I, no, not, like another couple of inches here. It's this cool red box with a big black widow spider on it. Okay, it's upside down, it's barely in frame. But this thing is called a decimator. We'll put a link to that in the show notes because these things are phenomenal. They allow you to basically convert anything to anything. HD, they don't do 4K yet, although I should look and see if they've got a 4K model yet. Um, so that allows you to convert every, anything to everything. So in my case, I'm converting my 1920 by 1080 signal that is 59.94 frames per second into 1920 by 1080 at 24 frames per second, just because that's what I need for this broadcast. Anyway, so that's that's what I do for the broadcast. But let's just say that's not you're not doing the broadcast. You just want to capture it. If you want to capture it out in the field, like in the video that I did a week and a half ago or so, whatever it was, uh, when I did the um, the iPhone camera seven camera, iPhone seven plus is new portrait mode demo where I was out in the field with my friend Keisha and we were shooting pictures of her and you were able to look through the iPhone and see exactly what I was seeing. The way I was doing that was the same thing, same cable with the HDMI port, but instead of going into the switcher, because I was out in the field, now I get to try and untangle these cables here, I was plugging it straight into my Atomos Ninja Assassin recorder. That's this guy here. So if I take this and just plug it in right now, we are going to immediately see the screen on here. And if I rotate landscape, we're gonna get that on there. So this is a field recorder. I pop in an SSD drive and anything that I do on here is gonna show up in here. And you can see it's you know momentarily delayed, but it's all it's all captured. It doesn't, you know, the real time delay here doesn't matter for this. It's all there and away we go. So that's how I capture that in the field. So there's that part of it. Okay, so now 
I'm done with this. These are battery operated as well. These things are phenomenal. I've done a video on these before. Actually, we'll link to that too, because that's an older one, one of the earlier ones that I did. And that thing is just a super awesome product. Okay, so now what about if I want to capture this on the Mac? Um, well, a couple things. So first of all, this none of this is, is necessary anymore. The HDMI converter, if you're capturing to the Mac, is no longer necessary. So let's get rid of all this. Now all you need is this guy, the sync cable that comes with your iPhone, lightning on one end, USB on the other. Unless you are the proud owner of a brand new MacBook Pro that doesn't have USB, in which case you need the, or it has USB-C, so you need the lightning to USB-C. Anyway, whatever. So this plugs into here. And so now this computer has completely refused to log in. I was hoping that by now it would be done. So it, that's just great. So we're going to try it logging in again. Let's see if I can get this thing in there. Apologies for this. You know, you decide to switch users and that apparently is a very bad idea. Oh, good. Now it's logging in. Um, terms and conditions. I agree that I have the right to use my laptop. I, at some point, apparently I did a software update and it's requiring a complete re-login of iCloud. That is so frustrating. I get it on a major update, but this had to have been one of the teeny tiny little updates and still did it. Anyway, uh, just, no, oh, go away. Stop asking me questions. Just update. I don't care. Yes, series and why is all the same setup questions again. Watching the login is going to find out that this user has been completely eradicated. <laughs> okay, so now to do this, plug in yonder iPhone cable, USB port, you gotta find one of those. You can quit. And, okay, so now I'm plugged in just as if I was syncing, tethering, I mean syncing or, well, syncing. I guess that's the only reason you would do this. Um, and I'm going to launch QuickTime Player. And I'm gonna put this up on the screen in just a moment. Let me make sure everything else is closed out of here. And make sure I got the right one set up. Yeah, no, yes. Yes, that's it, okay. So let's go back to the screen. I'm starting over here, um, back to the Mac. So now we're looking at my Mac and the computer is again trying to take off. In QuickTime Player, so launch QuickTime Player. So QuickTime Player. And oops, and you go to a, go into QuickTime Player. Oh my God, old video, new, mo new movie recording. Come on, seriously, new movie recording. There we go. And at first it's probably gonna come up with your built-in eyesight. Oh no, it switched over. So if it shows your built-in eyesight, if you click on this little tiny uh, inverted chevron next to the record button, you'll see you can choose between the FaceTime HD camera, that would be the camera built into your computer, and the iPhone that you've just plugged in. So there's my Photo Joseph 7 Plus. So now I'm getting basically the same thing that I had before, and if I rotate my iPhone, it's going to rotate there as well. So now I have the ability to capture what the iPhone sees and I get to see that, um, yeah, I ca have them capturing what the iPhone sees directly into QuickTime. So when you're ready to record, you just hit record on here and off it goes. So there's a little test, see I can record this. Um, you probably shouldn't rotate in the middle of recording. Yeah, see that will stop it, that'll mess it up. Um, that is something you can do when you're recording to an external device, which is kind of cool. But let's just, don't save that, let's do another one. New movie recording. I'm, the only reason I'm actually going to record it is because I want you to see the specs to which it captures to. Let's go ahead and go landscape. And uh, that's enough. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit record. Do a little wobbly. It's funny, when you're looking at it this way, you really start to see how much that background moves, which you wouldn't normally see because you'd actually be moving the device. Okay, so there's recording. Command I to get info on that. And this has captured a 1920 by 1080 signal. So it is capturing the full resolution. Uh, it doesn't show the frame. Well, it's just 32.1 frames per second there. That's not totally accurate, um, but it doesn't matter. That It's capturing the full resolution, and that is what matters. Okay, so that's how you would capture this video screen, this live screen, to your computer. So you've got your way of capturing it to an external recording device and a way to capture it straight to the computer. So both totally valid, just depending on what you're doing. So QuickTime Player makes that easy. If you're using an app like ScreenFlow, ScreenFlow will also see this as a source and you can do the same thing, capture straight to ScreenFlow, which then you have all kinds of really cool editing options. So if you're if you're doing a demo, if you're gonna build a demo, for example, of your app on the iPhone, launch ScreenFlow, capture it under there, by far the easiest way. You got all editing tools and it's really, really cool. Okay, so let's see, how long did that take? Do we wanna go to the second part? 
No, you know what? We're going to save the second part for tomorrow. We're going to we're gonna leave tethering for tomorrow. So it's not going to be a super clean tether, but I have figured out a kind of sort of workaround to allow you to tether from the iPhone, meaning I have my camera fired up, I take a picture on the iPhone, and that picture shows up in the computer. A little bit of a workaround, but it works. It's kind of cool. So we're going to look at that tomorrow. Save that for tomorrow's photo moment. Uh, in the meantime, that's it. Hope the how to capture this screen was useful. If you have any questions about that, you know what to do with them. Stick them in the comments, and um, I will do my best to answer them. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.